Before we have our thermal expansion discussion and demonstration, we have to know what our pressure is on the house, and we need to know that with the pipes at room temperature. So we're right at, right at 50. We're gonna use this little uh, contraption for demonstration purposes. So we're gonna go ahead and throw some pressure into it. Get everything opened up and get some pressure in there. Turn this off. And turn this off. So hopefully we're gonna have 50 pounds in here like we had on the house. All right, let's get this party started. All right, so let's go ahead and create a little thermal expansion. Um, this torch is going to represent the heater, and this little contraption is going to represent the water pipe in your home under room temperature. So when the heater fires up and starts to uh, heat this up, we're going to get a lot of temp a lot of pressure rise. So let's go ahead and fire this up and watch that gauge. We'll go ahead and take this off of here before things turn into uh, something a little dangerous here. So let's go ahead and grab this and we're going to cool it off in this ice water. And if you can see from back there, um, you would actually see that pressure start to drop as things cool off. And that is why you can have an intermittent problem with temperature and pressure valves opening periodically because of the um, difference in the pressure rising up and down as the temperature rises. How you will check to see if you have a thermal expansion problem in your home is very easy. You'll start out with a gauge out there on the spigot and make sure that everything is at room temperature, all your water pipe in your system and make sure nothing is running, of course. You will go to open up the hot side of a faucet long enough to get your water heater to activate and let that run three or four minutes. Shut the faucet back down, and of course, make sure there's no other water running in the home. And go check your gauge, and if your gauge starts to climb, just like the one we saw on this vise, um, that means you have a problem. To solve this problem, the first step, if you're really lucky, you'll be able to remove this little cap get to your Schrader valve and just put some more air in the tank, charge it back up. Um, it's supposed to be set at the equivalent pressure of your system. The next thing would be if you're not as fortunate and your tank has failed, like this one we're going to use as an example shortly, um, you'll have to replace your tank. And probably the worst case scenario will be if you have to completely add a tank because you just simply don't have one. And we will also get into doing that as well. Before you check the pressure in your tank, you have to make sure that there's no pressure on your water pipe system. So, you know, go out to the street, turn the water off, open up a faucet, and bleed the pressure off the system, and you can just throw your gauge on there. Now, if water comes out of here, that means your tank is ruptured, and we're gonna get into how to replace this tank after we talk about how you would charge this back to its appropriate level. If you are lucky and just simply need to adjust the pressure in your tank to control your thermal expansion, you just, you know, this little valve on the tank is just the same exact valve we have on our tires. So you can put that on there and just blow it up to whatever you need. Um, and you can check it with a tire pressure gauge. They come preset at 40, and like I said, they need to match the pressure that's on your system. So if you've determined that you need to either replace or add a tank, we'll leave a link in the description of where you can find the tank, and we'll go over a couple of tips of, um, that will be helpful how to do this. So the first thing is obviously turn your water off. And then if you can drain your water down below this point when you remove the tank, it'll be, you know, less messy. Um, also, when I remove these tanks or anything to do with, you know, threaded fittings, I like to hold the pipe with a backup wrench. So when you're um, 
putting torque on this to remove it, it's not transferring down into the pipe and you will just simply remove this. Just like that. Now that you have your new tank appropriately charged with the correct air pressure, you would want to tape and dope this. If you don't know how to do that, we will leave a link in the description also for that, for a different video. And you'll just thread it back on there after you have the tape and dope on there. You can start it by hand. There we go. And same thing, you know, when you go to like actually tighten it up, always put a backup wrench on there like we discussed earlier. And just tighten it back on there. And go ahead and turn your water back on. And then go back and you can check out at your gauge to see if everything's corrected. So if you have to add a tank, let's look at this diagram. It shows that you can add a tank in the horizontal position. I would definitely not recommend that unless that is the only option. And it also shows that tank in between the backflow and the water heater. And I don't know if you can see right here in the instructions or not, but it also does not want you to hang these tanks in such a place that it can freeze. If you're finding this video helpful, will you please give us a thumbs up and possibly consider subscribing? And so if you don't have a tank at all, your line probably turns down with a 90. So if you want to introduce a tank at your heater, you can just, you know, remove the 90. And of course, this is a very simplified version. There are thousands of scenarios that can take place here. And you'll introduce a T and then you will, you know, throw your tank in there. And there are certain circumstances where you would not want to mess with the piping around your heater. We will take a look at uh, something that happened to me in the field recently where I decided to add the tank in a completely different area and make sure your tank is on the cold side. Also, if you have to add a tank, you want to make sure that the tank is really well supported like I showed you in that diagram. Um, you can put the tanks in a horizontal position. However, if you do that, um, you would definitely want to make sure that that tank is supported. Um, they make lots of nice little brackets or you could wrap a roll of band iron around it and support it from the ceiling or maybe a wall but you don't want the weight of this tank transferred into your piping system. Let's go ahead and take a quick glance at this scenario in the field that made me a little bit nervous to try to put a tank right here at the heater. As you see, we have some CPVC tied into a sharp bite and everything's jammed up kind of close. And let's take a quick look at the other things in this room. I was scared to crack that CPVC because if I had to get into this part of the system, that could lead into something a little complicated. If you have just a second to leave a comment, let me know what you thought about the drains in that room and which might have been the worst of the little boo-boos in there. I did drop a text title in this video in one of the beginning clips not to have your pressure exceed 80 pounds on your system. So when you go to check your pressure at the very beginning of this process, if you have more than 80 pounds, go ahead and get that corrected first before you do anything else. As you see, I got really lucky here with this little room to hang a tank in. If at all possible, you always want to hang your tank where it's very easy to get to to remove and replace in the future because you will definitely have to do that sooner or later.